He was a most interesting, interesting man. The play was done very successfully at the Burgtheater in Vienna. And the, um, there was a symposium afterwards. And all these people showed up, all these Viennese people showed up, and they wanted to know why an American would write a play about Frederick the Great, because Frederick the Great, of course, tore Austria apart all the time. <laughs> and I asked the translator, I said, can you translate bird dogs into German? And she did, and they all went, what's that? And Frederick lived with these little uh, Italian greyhounds all his life. And when they began to die, when he was an old man, he stopped getting new ones. And as the last one died, he went to paroxysms of grief. One of them, he shut himself in, the, in a room with the body of a dead dog for three days. The soldiers on the parade grounds could hear the king of Prussia screaming. This is true. Um, and this tore me all up because my father had uh, raised bird dogs. And I knew the relationship between men and dogs. I knew something about that. Then I did the research. And with the research, I discovered all kinds of other things, a father conflict that was, you know, all so on. And I also discovered that Frederick the Great was very funny. I mean, later he had a tempestuous but uh, often pretty good relationship with Voltaire, who came to live with him for a while. Yeah, that was pretty good, you know, it was pretty fast company. Um, but Frederick was very funny, and I was writing the beginning of that play, and I, I, a man who was a psychiatrist, told me, he, I heard all sorts of stories and they're little anecdotes that you track down. And he said, I know a story about Frederick, I'll tell you. And he told me the story and I said, oh my God, and I put it in the play and I think it gets the play off to a very good start. Because at the beginning, the king is getting up in the morning, he's on a battlefield and he's chewing out his ministers and he's being all like that. And the guy comes in and a soldier has been condemned to death at court martial. And the sort of pompous general says, uh, here, here he is. And Frederick says, well, soldier, you've been condemned to death for having sexual relations with your horse. And the soldier says, yes, majesty. And there's a pause, and then Frederick says, a mare, I hope. <laughs> and the audience goes, wow, I like that. And he said, yes, majesty. And he stares at him, and he said, tell me, what did you stand on? And it, uh, so, uh, you know, <laughs> a bucket, your majesty, what, did it fall over the bucket of the horse? They go into all of that stuff, and he says, general, give me, you've been condemned to death for this, give me the paper. The general hands him the paper and he signs it and he says, pardon, transferred to the infantry. And that supposedly happened. Uh, another one that did happen was that he had two uh, famous officers, great officers, who came to him and said, Majesty, we must fight a duel. We're in this situation where we have to fight a duel. He said, no, you're not going to fight a duel. Look, we've got to <laughs> stop this. You know, <laughs> you're not going to do it. And they said, Majesty, we must. We know that you, we must. Our honor demands it. He said, all right, where's it going to be? And they told him. So these two guys <laughs> arrive at the, at the field where they're going to shoot each other or whatever, and they, all these carpenters are building this thing. <laughs> they say, what's this? And they say, it's a gallows. The man who wins is going to be hanged <laughs> the minute after <laughs> the duel <laughs> by orders of the king. So they called off the duel. He did all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, a, a great um, mixture of pain and humor. He was a first-class uh, uh, amateur flutist. He composed occasional flute music of its time, the Potsdam School of Music. It's very beautiful, very beautiful. Frederick believed that the flute should be like the voice, like a singer's voice. It should be like that. Um, most extraordinary man who lived a incredible life and became the creator of Prussian Germany and Hitler's hero. And over the over the fireplace in the bunker was this famous portrait of Frederick the Great, staring out like that. And Hitler, in his megalomania, believed himself the incarnation or something of Frederick the Great. But I um, found that really where that play came from, of course, is the dogs and my father and my background as a boy in Tennessee, which is why the Viennese, when they heard me say that, said, was? <laughs> but they understood after. Uh, through the translator, I explained it. Which is, again, something that you read, you know, something that you come across. Because I had read the, uh, in a history book, I was in uh, 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 um, the outdoor, uh, uh, outdoor drama in North Carolina. I was down there, and I was um, uh, one of Paul Green's outdoor dramas, which I'm very fond. And I, was, uh, I went to a bookstore and found a history. Frederick the Great started reading it and read about the dogs. And I was at a restaurant where family restaurant, little kids and families and everything. And I got to the thing of where he had such horrifying 
reactions to the death of these very last dogs. And I began to cry because, as I told you, my father died when I was 13. All this is all mixed up inside somebody's psyche. And I started bawling and crying into my Salisbury steak or whatever. And the little kids would say, Mommy, there's a crazy man over there crying. Or What's wrong? Uh, shattered, you know, by something. And you then write a play about it. 